Why, hello there, everyone. Welcome back to Deadly Premonition 2. Are you ready to pick it up right where we left off? Now that we can actually play the video game, we spent so much time in the intro and meeting the chef slash other hotel uh, employee who's totally not the same guy, wink, wink. Uh, yeah, that was fun. Uh, we learned that we're supposed to get around town via skateboard. Oh, man, I'm excited about that being a thing, if that's even a thing. And, uh, yeah, we're here in our hotel room, and we're about to get the day started for the first time. And I'm excited. So excited I had to yawn into your, all of your ears. You're welcome. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look around the lobby. But first, cutscene, apparently. I've already been out here, though, haven't I? Technically, when I went to my room in the first place, yeah, I'd already been out here. So I don't know what you're so fascinated by there, Do Francis. You feel that, Zach? Dozens of paintings no one will ever see. The faint scent of tobacco baked into these walls for over a century. Now that's what I call a hotel. Wow. Zach, can you see him? His fashion sense is beyond me, but he appears to be a gentleman. A gentleman? Perhaps we should talk to him. What? Are you talking about the dude in the painting? What? Gay? What the hey? Yeah, that's a gentleman, all right. What's up, dude? Nice tie. Did you buy it here? <laughs> it's been a long time since someone spoke to me. No one these days ever tries to see me. They can see what's far in the distance, but are blind to what's in front of them. No. Maybe they're only pretending not to see. That's what civilized society does to people. Exactly. Ever since mankind got their hands on civilization, they zoomed away at a frightening speed. Zoomed away from what? <laughs> What a laugh. Don't be a fool. <laughs> you know the answer. As for me, just call me Hoongan. 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 A title given to a leader in a certain religion. Is that what you are? <laughs> yeah. I run this bitch. What in the name of Harry Potter Hogwarts is going on around here? All these photos and paintings moving. The Oracle. The Oracle. Yes, she's the one that gives you your purpose. Your religion hat, Zach. Here we go. Fell tin maidens in the shrine of hunger. Find the flying serpent in the ambiguous zero. Dance with the flying serpent. And you will glimpse the other world. The fuck? Ten maidens and an ambiguous zero. Got it. But what do you mean by other world? Follow the oracle. No, what the fuck? <laughs> so, did you hear all that? Looks like we've already taken our first step into chaos. I agree. Chaos but has definitely, our duty. definitely begun. We need to accept the chaos, let it inside, then carefully dismantle it piece by piece. And after we've put all the pieces back into their rightful places, the truth will reveal itself. Let's capture the truth. Okay. And present it with a shiny pair of silver bracelets, Zack. What the hell are you talking about, dude? Sure. I'm assuming that that must be referring to some collectible we're gonna need to end up doing with the ten maidens or whatever. I don't even know, man. That was so fucking weird. That was some straight Harry Potter, like Hogwarts, talking to the paintings type shit, and I don't even know what the fuck to say about it. But all right, that happened. Anyway, there's another payphone down here. If I need to save it, that's good to know. Um, oh yeah, run faster, dog. We could buy some drinky drinks. This is the same drinky drinks I could buy upstairs. Or no, wait. Is this where I... I was upstairs? I don't even remember now. 
You know, you could buy a lollipop, butter cookie, chocolate chip cookie, and a donut. If I didn't already have an inventory full of friggin' things, I would buy some stuff if I needed it, but I think I'm okay right now. I'm just looking around. Apparently we need to look for a map, right? That's our objective. Check out the old map. It's down here somewhere. Welcome to the bathroom. We can't go in the ladies' room, but we can go in the men's room. Let's go in. Hello, hello. Coming in. Oh. Whether it's a restaurant or a hotel, the key to charming your customers is how you present your bathroom. Uh-huh. I'm sure you feel the same way, don't you, Zach? Now this... This is the kind of bathroom a person can really get excited about. It might even trump the one we saw in that drug dealer's house in Austin. Remember? The art piece on display in there utilized the natural curves of human ribs in such a novel way. It was truly brilliant. Yeah, okay. Bathrooms get you hype. Wow, this is interesting. I don't think I've ever seen bathroom stalls that go f just straight into the wall like this. What the hell? That's interesting. Like where it looks like it has a root. Like almost every single one I've ever been in, you know, the door is the wall and that's it. Yeah, dude, human rims, uh, r that rims, ribs in a novel way. You heard him right, Chet. What's up, man? Welcome back to uh, the deadliest premonition. Here's the here's the map we're supposed to be looking at. Let's take let's take a look at it. Casa Pineapple. I saw that. Zach, this is Lucare. I think I'm finally starting to understand what our concierge was trying to say. You can tell this town was built by a very methodical person. No, wait. Maybe they just didn't care, and that's why it ended up this way. It's just another symbol of mankind's obsession with molding nature to fit our own rules. Okay, then. We checked out the map, and our quest is complete. Dude, we've already done three quests in this game. We're rocking through it. There's probably only, like, ten quests in the game, probably. What did you think of Hoongun's Oracle? Despite all the dramatic build-up, it's little more than a childish riddle. I kind of agree. Heartwarming, really. Exactly the kind of feeling one gets from the good old-fashioned countryside. Also, Chet, you've dealt with stalls that had a door and a stainless steel partition wall? Huh. I can't say I've dealt with one with a stainless steel wall partition, at least not that I can think of. Unless you, well, the airport has ones like that, but I don't know if they're stainless steel. They're definitely thick, thicker walls, though. But they don't go all the way to the ceiling. Anyway, the Oracle decryption starts. Let's start by oh. tracking down those ten maids. Oh, he the actually... Oracle gave us a place and an act. We need to go to the Shrine of Hunger and fell ten maidens. Now, where in this town can one satiate their hunger? The hotel, and where? And the ten things that need to be knocked down. Simple, right? Simple. The answer is bowling. The shape of the bowling pin was based on the feminine form. The ten maidens are the ten pins. Oh, yeah? That's cool. Are you talking about the diner? can both eat and bowl at the same time. Right there, homie. I'm skeptical as to whether we'll be able to find such a place in a backwoods town like this. Dude, Alexis's Diner and Lane. Do I have to click it? Alexis's Diner and Lane. I guess I have to click it. This is it, Zach. There are even pins and a bowling ball on the sign. I bet we'll be able to eat some Cajun cuisine and bowl there. Maybe even both at the same time. Sweet. Nice job, Zach. I knew you'd be able to find it. As long as I got some kind of Cajun pasta, I am in there. All right, well, we're going to Alexis's now Diner and Lane. Oracle. Oh? There's no flying serpent on this map. Uh-huh. Could it be a contrail or perhaps a dragon? I'm sure we'll find out later. First, let's just figure out where we need to go. Do you know what the ambiguous zero represents? Ambiguous zero. Zero is usually zero. treated as a base number. Uh-huh. But under what conditions would a base number be ambiguous? Uh... The answer is temperature, Zach. Oh. Yes. Zero degrees Fahrenheit is minus 17.7 degrees Celsius. Okay. And zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Are you talking about the fucking fire station? Are we talking about a fire station? Are we talking about a fire station? Is, does our zero refer to Celsius or Fahrenheit? Let's think for a moment. We're in Louisiana. Which measurement system do we use here in America? Fucking Fahrenheit, homie. Are we getting on to a fire station? Is that what we're doing? I'm 
guessing it's gonna be the fire station, because none of these other ones have anything to do with temperature. Very funny, Zack. What? Now it's time to get serious. Not the fire station? You already know the answer, don't you? Do you know what the ambiguous zero represents? Zero is you the Coxon Food Delivery Service's okay. cold storage warehouse. Oh, it's a cold storage. I didn't know it was a cold storage. It just says Clarkson Food Delivery Services. Okay, I guess the cold storage makes it make more sense. That's got to be it. Even with this blazing sun in the sky, they can easily keep the temperature below freezing. Be honest now, Zach. You knew the answer from the very start, didn't you? Totally. I was just joking. I was just fooling. You said Fahrenheit. I thought a fire station, okay? Anyway, I got ten bucks for that, apparently. Sweet. So the and Oracle is going to give us clues like that, like that and we have to figure out where to go. Character. That's going to be interesting. We end up determining how much time we spend in this town. What are you doing? Yo, that slow motion Zack Snyder cigarette Sorry, smoke. Let's boss, go. But this is a smoke-free hotel. What the if you're dying of smoke, head out the entrance and you'll find a smoking area in the rear parking lot. What kind of voice is this? You're the At your service, boss. I know he keeps calling me Are Zach, but good I'm Funky G, with homie. The concierge and the chef. Eh, uh, we work at the same place, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I can't really say whether we're good friends with each other. We're all professionals, though. Nothing more, nothing less. I believe we've struck gold here, Zack. It just screams deep south, actually. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. This is all his charm. It's all fucking insane is what it is. So, if I want to smoke, I should go out the entrance and around to the rear parking lot? Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. I'll play by your rules. Sounds good. Why in the freaking hell is this guy multiple personality? It seems so weird to me. But all right, apparently we need to, let me read those again. Those are my quests that I need, an M4 and an M12 or whatever the hell that was. Find a spot where it's below zero in Clarkson's cold storage. You have to do it between a certain time on the timer. Anyway, whatever. We also need to get a strike at Alexis's diner and lane. I might go do that first, because this feels like it's the main story one since it's M4. But if I go do M12 first, we can go strike those pins down, player. I'm excited about bowling. This game's gonna have a bowling mini game. Don't even get me started. Who are we calling? The concierge. We oh. always strive to provide our guests yes, with indeed. the finest of service. Sir. What's up, Dave? I mean, this dude is talking to himself, but calling it Zach. Well, he has like a split personality, Chet. I don't know if you were you've seen the first game of this, but this dude, his name is Francis. Zach Moore or Francis whatever York Morgan whatever and then he has like a, per a second personality named Zach Morrow's back y'all she's here for her weird game yay our humble bucolic town does have its inconveniences shopping in particular can be a bit of a slog therefore we decided to provide a modest selection of daily necessities yeah. right here at our very own front desk. I can buy stuff here is what he's saying great Sounds convenient. Exactly. Remind me of Crank Eggers when the dude goes, Yay! Alright, let's see what you got for sale, homie. Rubber bullets. First aid kits. Cup of coffee. Cola. Feather cigarettes. A butter cookie. Some suntan lotion. Mint gum. Sleeping bag. Adhesive cleaner. Anti-num. There's so many items in this game. What in the absolute hell? <clears throat> Serving you is my... Please do let me know if there is any other way for me to assist you. Alright. No way right now, homie. I guess I gotta go out back and smoke a cigarette. But we're also gonna learn how to travel around town. Wait, 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 wait. There's another person to interact with? Oh, that's just the bellboy. I'm not gonna talk to him again. Crazy. He was just there, and now he's over here? And who's he talking to? Who's this BZ? I don't know. I'm trying to see if there's anybody else we can talk to, but nobody around here other than Dave. Have you not heard of Crank Yakers before, Chet? It's an old, uh, like, it was like a prank call show where they use, like, puppets. I remember that show. I don't know if I remember the yay thing, Morrow. I just, you know, was just going, yay! <laughs>
But I know the show. For sure. All right. Loading, please wait. It's like they made loading screens just to annoy you. It's on PC, man. Stop loading me. Okay, then show me later, Marl. Fine. Compared to non-smokers, smokers have a 4.7 times greater chance of getting lung disease. Right, now we have a child over here judging us. You know that means it's more likely than getting asbestos poisoning? Did you know? The risk of death from lung cancer is actually much lower than what you think it is. In fact, it's tiny when compared to heart disease, strokes, and pneumonia. We're always surrounded by easy ways to die, you know. Some people even get randomly struck by lightning and die right there on the spot. Then I reckon you also know that secondhand smokers have 1.3 times greater the risk compared to smokers? Of course. So you won't mind paying the damages when I die of lung disease? How about writing that in a contract for me? You got a pen, right? Bitch, we outside. Walk over there. Good lord. <laughs> I will stare into your soul. I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. <laughs> oh, that's stupid. By the way, what's your name? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. Francis, that's what everyone FBI. Calls me. Um... Is something wrong with you? Adults ain't supposed to act like that. I only asked for your name so I can write it on the contract. You should have been able to figure that out if you're a real FBI agent like you said. Come on, sign here. Right here on the paper. What the fuck are you like? <gasps> Just as I thought, Zach. This contract paper. Oh? It's a San Rouge wrapper. Oh? San Rouge is here, too. The fuck is San this Rouge? This must mean that San Rouge is connected to the Lee's Clarkson murder case somehow. This is a sprawling case that's spread across the entire South. It's within our jurisdiction, Zach. We'll need to steal the right to investigate from the local authorities at once. <laughs> By the way, miss, what's your name? Patricia Woods. But I gotta write my name myself, or else it won't be a real signature. Patricia Woods. She'll be important later, I guess. Maybe. Tell me, Patricia, does this town have a sheriff? Or is it under the jurisdiction of the nearest city police? Perfect timing. Well, go on and steal it if you want it. I was just thinking about how this is way out of my daddy's league. Thank you for the information, Patricia. Okay, Zach, it's time to get to work. How should we seize control from the sheriff this time? Do we murder him? Seize control from the sheriff. Do we steal his car since somebody stole mine? Anyway, base controls. Even an agent needs to stay sharp when it comes to basic. Run, crouch, dot, blah, blah, melee attacks. Red room. Right. If I press Y, I go into the red room menu. I haven't really shown that off yet, but it's basically just our menu of things we can do. I can show that off real quick, I guess. It has the uh, inventory. It's got a map now, which wasn't there before. Well, there's a journal, I'm guessing, that recaps like what we've done so far. Yeah, when you're not sure what to do next, use it for the main quest displayed in the tree, side quest, free quest, blah, blah, blah. Actually, this is a good thing to look at real quick. All we have is main quest stuff, huh? Oh, it branches off. I see. I see. Well, we're going to do both of those bitches for show. You think we should go with the murder of the sheriff so we can just take over for him? I think that sounds like a plan, chat. Definitely sounds like a plan. I'm guessing data is so we can save it. If you press RB, you can switch back here. You can see the config. You can leave the game if you know you want to play a better game. It's a guidebook. I'm assuming it's like tutorial stuff. Oh, like control stuff if you forgot. Yeah, tutorial stuff. Link board. Oh, the one from our room. Okay, you can look at that here in the menu too. That's cool. All right. Dope. Wait. General store? What? I thought this was a sheriff. Uh, it is the sheriff. But he's also the general store? What? I'm so confused. What the, the hell was that sound? Was that the sound of me running into the car? Because Jesus, that was loud. Gotta meet the sheriff. 
<laughs> hey I'm there. David. It'd be funny if he was so, David again. Uh, you're the fella from the FBI I've been hearing so much about. No. I'm Melvin. They call me the sheriff around here. Fucking Melvin. Why has there always got to be a Melvin? Anyway, what's up, Melvin? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. But call me York if you can. <laughs> I'm here to take over this investigation. That's what everyone He's calls like, me. what the fuck investigation are you talking huh? about? Uh, never mind. <laughs> well, all right. Mr. York. How's that sound? Fine by me. <laughs> I'm sure you figured this out. But our town's a small one. Yeah. Folks are already busy spreading gossip about how some FBI agents come to town. Now, uh, now I reckon you came from the city. What was it? D.C., L.A., or New York? Anywho, in the city, it's normal not to know who your neighbor is. Fella who moves in next to you could cook up a dozen folks in his backyard, and no one would bat an eye. That's the city for you. Now, I never lived in one myself. But I visited him a few times, so I know what it's like. All pigs must die in the city of wolves. Yeah! Now, does that sound badass or what? I bet you'd... Hey! <laughs> She's like... I know, I know, CLG. I'm just trying to make a little small talk. CLG? Anywho, Crazy little girl? Crazy little girl. Around these parts... Everyone knows each other's name. So lots of folks get leery when they see an étranger like you. And since it's my duty to protect the town, I thought I'd stop by and say hello. Zach, it looks like this sheriff is quite the happy-go-lucky type. A clear indication of just how peaceful this town like, is. The fuck is he doing? Melvin, about the Lee's Clarkson case. I knew you were here for that case. Can't put one past the FBI. Mm. So they even got eyes on the smallest of towns like us, huh? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Our world is filled with information, and it's all within their grasp. FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Watching too much TV, homie. She's like, I don't know, fucking big shrug. The Lee's Clarkson case is connected to a top secret case that we've... I know, I know. If you're fixing to take the lead, <laughs> then go right ahead. I'm just the humble sheriff of a tiny little town. My jobs are to stop my neighbors from beating the piss out of each other and listen to old folks complain. Honestly, this whole murder case has been weighing me down. So I'm going to give you my full cooperation, Mr. Special Agent, sir. Well, I didn't take much work. Well, Zach, that was anticlimactic. Seriously. I didn't even get to use my secret weapon. I didn't get to shoot him in the face. Wait, what? Melvin, there's a cold storage warehouse on the southern end of town, isn't there? I'd like to get permission to enter it. Say what? You want to see where the body's being kept, right? Oh, I get it now. Wow. Lisa's body, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, that's what I call a special agent. You already figured that much out. Mm. But, uh, hmm, I'm not too sure that, uh, going down there at this point is really going to help much, you know? Explain it yourself, Daddy. That's incredible. I don't believe this. Amazing. Did you hear that, Zach? They put the body in a cold storage warehouse. This is fantastic. Insanely fantastic. R really? Well, uh, how about that? <laughs> well, all right then. How about I'll that? Head on down to a the genuine crazy person talking sure to himself. To That's what I want to hear him say. Sounds good. The management company only keeps the warehouse open during certain hours, so you'll have to come during those hours. I ain't looking to create any further disturbances, so be on time. Got it? All come right. on, let's roll, CLG. I'm gonna walk home, Daddy. I still got another stop to make. Oh, if you say so, sweetie. <laughs> She's a real sharp one, as you can see. So I try to stay out of her way. Well, all right then, York. I'll see you at the warehouse. 
It's weird. She's dressed so adult. So she has like a very adult like body model, but she's just shorter. So it feels weird, right? Like they didn't give her like a kid body model. She just has an adult body model that's shorter. Also, holy shit, y'all. Skateboard time. Skateboard time. Hell yeah. Speed up. Slow down. I'm never going to slow down. I'm only going to be speeding up up in this bitch. Hell yeah. Anyway, fuck yeah, bro. You guys ready for this? Oh, I'm so excited. Anyway, we have to get to the damn thing at a certain time period. From 8 to 17. Maybe we should just go do the cold storage warehouse first. So I don't actually miss out on the uh, the time frame. Because if I go bowling, I might waste my day away. As much as I would like to go bowling first. I'm going to do that first, I think. So anyway, you ready to skateboard? Fuck yeah, bro. Fuck yeah. Oh, hell yeah, dog. Oh, fuck. Bro, it's amazing. All right. Whoa. What? Hold on. It's like, don't go into the street. Hey, you. What? What do you want now? Skating. You interrupted my sesh. You ain't secretly cutting kids up and sticking them into jars while you work as an FBI agent on the surface, are you? Wow, that's uh, that's pretty dark, kid. Or using your FBI connections to sell kids to child trafficking organizations? I've arrested people who've done both, but... I've never engaged in either of those activities myself. Of course, I have imagined doing such things in order to learn more about the psychology of the criminals I deal with. I would never actually do them, but I might have imagined them, fantasized about them, researched them on the internet, you know, wrote it all down in my diary, but I've never actually done any of it. Not yet, anyways. It was just a joke. Why are you getting all serious? And don't tell me what you imagine, or else I'll get scared of you for real. Hey. Can I come with you? What the? You're a child. No, you cannot. You signed a contract with me, remember? And besides, I'm kind of worried about my daddy. Oh, my lord. Do whatever you like. This is America, land of the free. But make sure you keep up, because I'm a fucking epic skater and you'll never catch me. But I have one condition. What condition? Don't ask me about Zack. It's a private matter. Who the fuck is Zack? Zack, it feels like she's carrying something with her. Kind of reminds me of you back when we first met. I can't leave her alone like this. You feel the same way, don't you? Alright, well anyway, sorry. The fucking cat was making noise around here. All right, indicators help you stay aware of the direction and distance of your destinations. There's the main quests. Make sure we go toward the main quests. You can also follow waypoints that are yellow. But don't forget about the main quests. Not the main quest, but the main quests. Tribe Call Quest represent, represent, you know what I'm saying? Alright, well anyway, so How does she keep up? Oh, she just disappears, okay. What if I went this slow the whole game, guys? You think I would ever make it anywhere in time? Hell yeah. Alright, well anyway, we're going... Wait, what? Why is it... Oh, I see. I'm just looking at all these destinations I can go to, it's crazy. Alright, anyway, we're heading toward M4, let's go! A strange name. CLG, I think. What exactly does that mean? Clever little girl. Clever little, little girl. I went with nice cute. He made up his own Crazy. For me and all, but it sounds kind of weird. I wish he'd call me something normal, like just Patricia or Patty, you know? Patty? Now that name's got a ring to it. I like it. How about Zach and I call you Patty from here on out? Do whatever you like. Call me whatever the fuck you want. See if I care. I'm just a kid. I can't stop you. Anyway, I gotta learn how to control this thing, but holy shit, I'm skateboarding, guys. What a video game. I was looking around to see if there's, like, anything around, but... Wait, what's with the balloon? Hold up! What's with the balloon? What's with this balloon? Do I knock it over? Do I pop it? What can I do with this balloon? Uh, hold up. Can I punch it? Punch that balloon. No? Can't do anything to the balloon. That's lame. Alright, see ya. Apparently she just teleports with us. That's cool. All right, to M4. Let's go. So I can't do like tricks and shit. Oh, I can do. Oh, I can. Oh, that's that's breaking. I can't do like ollies and shit like that. No. Damn it. Maybe maybe I can later. Maybe we're just starting off slow. We gotta learn some more techniques first. You know. You can't just graduate to ollies and shit already. Even though he said he learned some tricks along the way. What's up, bitch? I don't know, she just fucking spawned as I was tele as I was teleporting, as I was skating by. Hell yeah. 
Yeah, yep, yep. That's uh, you know we're skateboarding on the sidewalk because we're you know not wanting to get hit by cars. None of these cars are moving, which is interesting. I feel like in the first game, there's a lot of moving cars that can just run your ass over. Just a jaunty skateboarding day through a Louisiana town of. Uh, what is it called again? The cat, the coot, the crew. I already forgot what it's called. The cat, the crop, the croy. Anyway, we're here. We're here, dude. The time goes by. Does the time go by in real time? It's only 9:20. Like, dude, that took me 20 minutes to get here. Well, between the cutscene and getting here, I took a lap around the outside. Why not? I got here real fast. I should also angle my camera up a little more so you guys can see what's ahead. Gives the world a bigger feel. Bigger field of view. I just don't know if there's any like collectibles worth looking around for. That's the only reason I'm even doing what I'm doing right now. Just trying to see if there's anything cool to find, you know? Hey guys! You guys, how you guys doing alright over here? That's cool. Bye. Alright, anyway. Let's go say what's up to the to the sheriff. Let's get this show on the road, homie. I don't know, I kinda miss driving around in my car. These fucking balloons gotta mean something, right? I wonder if I could pop them if I, when I can get my gun. Like, they even have like an X marks the spot thing on them. They gotta be something. Anyway, what's up, player? We're here. What up, Melvin? Mr. York! That was mighty quick. You skateboard quite fast. The special agent does it again. <laughs> you sure don't waste any time. I bet my CLG's got a lot to learn from you. Uh, uh, by the way, Mr. York, looks to me like you aren't packing anything. I was on vacation in New Orleans before I happened to stop by here. <laughs> well, shoot, that won't do. Here, take my gun. Here, I got something I think you'll like. Wow. Cool purple gun, bro. I call him Mr. Alligator. Badass, ain't he? Why is he half purple? I don't understand. I guess he's got like an alligator skin handle too. What the fuck? It's a tranquilizer gun. Oh, trank gun. I gotcha. Mr. Alligator fires rubber bullets. That's fine. That's fine with me. I don't need no regular ass gun right now. Also, walkie talkie. Here's a radio. With this, you won't have to worry about any expensive roaming fees. We call this gun Mr. Alligator. Ooh, and a radio. Okay, okay. Might take you a while to get used to him, but you'll get it. Okay. Try letting him rip a few times. Ain't no need to hold back out here. You can shoot as many people as you want, as long as they're rubber bullets. All right, okay, cool. All right, quest complete. We made it in time. Woohoo. Use Mr. Alligator to self defense gun you got from destroy wood boxes. All right, quest updated. Shoot the boxes. Holy crap, that chick is short. That's what I was saying, Mara. I was explaining that it's it's a, it's she's a kid, but she's basically a, an adult body model who's just short as hell. It's very strange. She's definitely dressed like an adult. She has the same body type, like body model as an adult. Like they didn't even try to make her look like kid shaped. They just made her an adult, but short. It's silly. It's very weird. It's off-putting almost. <laughs> but what a what what? A, why are, we shouldn't be surprised. This is this is deadly premonition. Everything's off-putting. Anyway, Mr. Alligator is a gun that fires non-lethal rubber bullets. You can purchase more rubber bullets at shops, so you can keep an eye on stock. Okay, that's cool. I already have bullets. Anyway, point gun is L trigger. R triggers fire. That's backward. No, no, that's correct. L R. Sorry. The button looked backwards, but not correct. L is a point, R is fire. That's the normal aiming buttons for a controller. We're good. Back, back. Oh, there's delay on that. Love that. Good stuff. Damn, dude, I'm amazing at clearing quests. That's already another quest complete. That shit's crazy. Hmm. Now this is an intriguing weapon. For a tranquilizer gun, it really packs a punch. It's like you could kill someone with it. But I'm afraid I'll decline. After all, this town is peaceful, isn't it? Huh. Cool gun. Take it back. Well, sure is peaceful. At least the humans are. What do you mean humans? But the animals? Huh. 
A uh, different story. Uh, remember what I named it? There are some real mean-ass gators out there in the swamps. And every now and then, they wander into town. Hell yeah, we're gonna fight alligators in this game, guys. You guys, are you guys hyped for the alligator boss fight? One of them even went and ate a kid once. It happened a long time ago, but <laughs> still. One of them even ate a kid once. And they side-eyes CLG over here. One chomps all it takes. They swallow down every last bit of you. Poor kid's parents didn't even know what to put in his coffin. The gator or the piece of his body that got pooped out. The worst part is, that taught the gators just how tasty we humans are. So now, those suckers just attack on sight. Well, then we gotta fuck them up. Wait, you don't... Oh, no, nah, dude. We don't want to fight a gator in the sewers, Chet. We want to fight a gator right in the middle of fucking town. I want a giant gator to just wander right on up into town and be like, What's up? But like, oh, shit, we gotta fight a giant gator just right in the middle of town. That'd be way more epic. Are you kidding me? Like, fucking the sewer. The sewers is too cliche. Man-eating crocodiles will feast tonight in Blood Swamp. Dude, this guy's all about those epic headlines. You know what I'm saying? You know he's fibbing, right? Gators don't attack folks. You sure about that? I never heard about no kid getting swallowed by a gator. Actually, Patricia, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong, and I can tell you why. I'm what? Yeah, kid. You're fucking wrong. Get used to it. You're a kid. Alligators do attack people, and it could happen in any town. Huh? Alligator, 1980. Directed by Louis Teague. It takes place in the Midwest, I believe. A teenage girl's pet alligator gets flushed down the toilet. Okay, first of all, how the fuck did you fit a gator in the toilet unless, like, a fucking baby, like the tiniest baby ever? Then, in the sewer, it feeds on the corpses of dogs that were used as test subjects for an experimental growth formula. After growing over 30 feet, it finally starts to go after humans. It's an extremely, yes, an extremely edifying movie. Back when I first saw it, I had a pet hamster. And I thought, maybe I could flush this hamster and he would do the same thing. But instead he just drowned and died and never came back. I was very sad. Also, welcome back to the stream, DJ. Your meeting must be over. Sweet. What's the groundbreaking uh, plot development you've missed so far? Well, you're looking at it. We've met the little girl, clever little girl, a.k.a. Uh, Patricia Woods. We've met the sheriff, which is her dad. Uh, other Woods, I forgot his first name. Melvin, how could I forget Melvin? His name's Melvin Woods. Uh, and we're going to our first destination, which is the cold storage warehouse where the body is supposedly stored. And that's where we're at right now. And we just got a gun. It's a, it's a tranquilizer gun, but it's a gun. It's called Mr. Alligator, and that's the name of the gun. So... Yeah, anyway, now he's telling a story about a pet hamster and a crocodile, an alligator movie and how they eat people or whatever. I don't know. Shit's fucking weird as usual. Hey, Agent York, what's your first order of business? <laughs> She's like, any but. <laughs> Go in charge now, remember? Well said, Patricia. I nearly lost sight of my true goal. Melvin, I couldn't help but notice the name on the side of that truck. This facility is connected to the victim, isn't it? Oh, oh, right, yeah, I reckon I better start from there. I'm gonna tell it to you straight right from the beginning, Mr. York. As you guessed, this warehouse is run by the Clarksons. The victim's father, Danny Clarkson, is the one who manages the whole place. Okay, but why did he choose to store her body in his own warehouse, right? Well, that's cause there ain't no other place to store it. Our town has a clinic inside a church, but no more. Whenever someone kicks the bucket, we just bury him in the graveyard right outside of town. We don't even embalm them. So they're pretty fucking gross when they, when they, uh, you know, we have a graveyard that'd be stinking up the place, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, what's up, Garzonis? Welcome to the stream. How you doing today? But not this time. We got a murder on our hands this time. We need to give Lisa's body an autopsy and keep it stored, right? So we had no choice but to rent out a corner of this warehouse. I see. So that's what led to the ingenious choice to store the victim's body in a facility that her family owns. Anywho. Any but. This is where the real story begins. Truth is, a few days before you got here, Lisa's body went missing. Missing? Yeah. All of a sudden, poof. 
Did you leave the warehouse unlocked? I most certainly did not. I locked the whole place up and made sure no one could get inside. No one stole the original key, and I couldn't find any fingerprints at the scene. So, in other words, this is a locked room mystery. The body of a beautiful young girl walks at mid... I, hey! <laughs> all right, all right, CLG. Reckon I should have told you about this earlier when you first said you wanted to come here. <laughs> it just didn't seem like the time or place as I remember. Anywho, how about we call it a day and head back to my office? You can go through all the files there. The fuck? I didn't even get to look around here yet. No, thank you. This is what I came to investigate. But Lisa's body isn't here anymore. You sure? That doesn't bother me one bit, Melvin. You see, I met a skeletal gentleman on my way here, and he was kind enough to give me an oracle. <laughs> Just imagine if somebody said this to you, and like, knowing what we know about this skeletal gentleman. <laughs> Just like, what? Skel skeletal what? A oracle like a like a like a fucking like a networking piece of equipment oracle like that kind of oracle or are we talking about like matrix oracle we're talking about like 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 uh, maybe you meant origel like like toothpaste like the stuff that makes your teeth feel better when it hurts like what, what what the fuck are you talking about also skeletal gentleman what the hell <laughs> he didn't explain no elaboration there that nobody even questioned that line all right, well, fuck it. I guess we're going inside. Also, the little girl just disappeared on me. What? Let me try something real quick. I got this gun. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let's see if I pop this balloon real quick. Bap! Oh, what? Did I miss? Hold up. Let me get closer. Bap! Okay, I apparently can't shoot the balloon. I thought maybe shooting the balloon was a thing. I don't know. The balloons are very, are very conspicuous. Maybe I can only pop them when I'm let, when they tell me I can. Um. Head to the morgue. Apparently, this is the morgue. So we're going into the morgue. Are you guys ready to go into the morgue? I'm ready. You played through this game about a month ago, Garzonis? That's awesome. Then you're going to be all ready for the ridiculousness that I'm about to encounter. You holding up okay, CLG? You sure you don't want to wait outside? Ooh, I'll be fine, Daddy. Just make sure you don't take your eyes off of him. He's so selfish and inconsiderate. I'm still not convinced he's actually a real FBI agent. Look, he's talking to himself again. <laughs> Zach, this is the ambiguous zero. The deep freeze. Let's hurry up and find that flying serpent, shall we? The flying serpent. Totally. All right, we're in the morgue, y'all. Is that a Questo Completo? No, we're in there. It's just updated. Gotcha. All right, we're looking for a flying serpent. You got it, dude. Toolbox. Oh, right. Okay, that's fine. You can buy stuff. You can save it if you need to. I think we're okay right now. Let's just, uh, I don't know. You got anything helpful to say, Melvin? Hey, Mr. York. You sure you want to keep investigating this place even though we know the body ain't here? Of course, Melvin. The skeletal gentleman gave me an oracle, remember? It's skeletal what? It's skeletal what now? <laughs> He's just joking, Daddy. You can't take him seriously. Huh? Well, was that really a joke, Mr. York? <laughs> well, I'll be. I see you've been hiding some real charm into that whole FBI routine. Yep. Sorry, Melvin, but I'm dead serious. Oh, well. Maybe it's a serious joke, you know? Also, apparently there are workers here. See, I thought that was Melvin, but that's just a person who works here who's apparently just you know plugging away there are people who work here after all Ooh, what's the shiny what's the shiny dog visions you can use vision to acquire important hints of that will help you proceed through the game use vision this will help uh, it'll deplete your concentration uh okay uh okay well i don't think i got a hint from any of that Gonna go ahead and press on through the door, shall we? Ooh, there's lots of meat hanging up in here. This place always gives me goosebumps, no matter how many times I come here. Yes, it's quite the fun house. 
truly a dazzling place. Meat entertainment. That's the only way to describe it. Woven together by life, frozen in time, a visceral musical. Symphony. We eat all this in order to survive. Yes, truly a symphony. Life and death resonating together. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, cool? Whoa now, CLG. Since when were you interested in this kind of stuff? What are you so surprised for, Daddy? I'm more mature than you are. Damn, get wrecked. I've seen way more realistic corpses on CSI, you know. <laughs> oh, man. At first, Zack, I was shocked by the notion of storing a victim's body alongside food. But as I gaze upon this hanging garden, I realize it's just another scene of violent, depraved murder. Yes. All we need to do is change our point of view, and things will expose themselves in utterly new ways. You hear that, Zach? You hear that? Anyway, what does CLG stand for? Clever little girl. Um, I thought it was going to be crazy little girl, but you know, clever little girl makes more sense when it's her dad. Anyway, what did I think of the first Deadly Premonition in the end? Since you didn't watch my playthrough, I, even though you have played it, uh, Garzonis. I don't really remember it very well, I will say that, but I do remember thinking it was fucking weird. What, like, what a weird ass game that was. How prehistoric of him, what to call her CLG. Oh, I see. Clever girl. Sorry, I didn't think of it that way. You're right, you're right. How positively prehistoric. I got a crawfish shell, y'all. Hell yeah. Anything else shining around here? These shinies are so small, I gotta really keep an eye out for them. Doesn't look like I can get over here on this side. No, sir. No, sir. Should I talk to this dude again? I don't even want to. Melvin, you just, you just stand there and look pretty on me. I'll be over here walking through the meat. Meat, 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 meat. Some people really dislike the first game, which I find odd. At worst, it's just a lackluster game. Yeah, exactly. It's just weird. Like, the gameplay is not great. Let's just flat out say that. But it's the game, the story, that's just like, it's so weird that it's fascinating. And this game, it's kind of on that level. Already, and we're only like two hours well, then, in. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you a personal <gasps> question. And I'm getting yeeted. What's up, Allie? Good morning, sir. In the hotel parking lot, when I first met you, the picture you had on your dashboard happened to catch my eye. Oh, yeah? I didn't Was that notice your wife? it. Oh, her? Yeah, and that's my lady, all right. It better be, because you got a very white child. Candy. Her name's Candy. Candy? Candy Woods? Prettiest girl in town, which makes me the happiest boy. A shooting star landed in a rural town, right on top of a man who now has a meteor struck heart. You always keep her photo with you? <sighs> you bet I do. The truth is, I jack off food every lunchtime, every day at lunchtime. Candy's a little sick right now. Oh, never mind. Sorry. She what? can't even leave the house no more. Okay, that's way sadder than I was going for. So I always keep a photograph with me. Kind of feels like we're always together, you know? I see. You care for your wife a great deal. But this means that... Yeah, that's right. My mama had me before she married daddy. But it don't matter. He's still my real daddy to me. Oh, okay. So it's not even his... It's not even, she's not even... I gotcha. All right. Not, not his real kid. Got it. <laughs> oh. Thank you, CLG, and you're my pride and joy. Well, Zach, isn't this a heartwarming scene? But there's one thing I just can't get out of my mind. Don't you think that photograph looked a bit too old? Perhaps Candy is already... No, let's not think about that. It might be a private matter, just like you, Zach. Yeah, and they didn't hear any of that at all. Not one bit. Okay, well, let's go ahead and see what's going on in here. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Okay, there's another door to open here. 
warehouse full of boxes. The music here is very interesting as well, to say the least. Alligator guard tail. Who left their alligator guard tail in here? That's a work safety violation. And that's a repeat from your last inspection or something. I don't know. Ooh, I can sneak around the backside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when someone talks to themselves, wise ones ignore it. Because if you don't, they might come at you, bro. Also, I'm getting a phone call from Minnesota. I am not going to answer it. Or I don't know if it's important or not. Yeah, these <laughs> these factory workers are a very active bunch, I agree. Oh, look, another shiny. Hello. Another alligator guard. Who left their alligator guard tail and scale up in this bitch, huh? Who be leaving their alligator pieces laying around? Like I said, work safety violation. Oh. A bullfrog tongue? Who cut out a bullfrog's tongue? Anyway, sometimes you come across hidden passages in areas that cannot be entered through normal means. Whenever you find a suspicious, you'll try looking at it from a different perspective. In other words, press. Okay. You can crouch. Did you know? You can crouch. Did you know? Did you know? Uh, well then. I guess that's just to show you an example of how to crouch, because there is nothing here. It's literally just here to show you that you can crouch. Incredible stuff. Alright, fuck it. You're hoping you'll get your headphones by tomorrow, DJ? God, I hope so. I'm not even waiting on those, man. That's like the, that's like the one piece of your uh, delivery of all your, you know, setup that you've been waiting on. The headphones. I think we finally made it to the cold storage we were looking for. Let's make sure we pick up the shiny first. Another bullfrog tongue. Man, somebody be just cutting out bullfrog tongues and leaving them laying around everywhere. What the heck? The heck? Here we are, Zach. The morgue. The morgue. They stored the victim's body in a cold storage warehouse operated by her family. I'd love to shake the hand of whoever came up with that one. Hey, Agent York. Did you just come here to laugh at rural officers who are doing the best they can? We don't have any special facilities like you people. What else did you expect us to do, huh? Don't compare us with city folk. This is Lucare. Or maybe you're just disappointed that you didn't get to see the bloated, decomposing corpse of a young girl. Sorry, you're right. I went a bit too far just now. But don't misunderstand, I honestly think it's a fantastic idea. I'd never try and bully your daddy. <laughs> Better not. Otherwise I'll fucking kill you! Thank you for understanding. That trumpet is super nostalgic. Yeah, they must have. They, they they were just like, we gotta keep the music. It's it's to keep the connection between the two games. We gotta keep the music. Anyway, you got another meeting coming up in thirty minutes, DJ. Damn, that sucks. Well, hopefully, it doesn't last the whole thirty, or you don't miss anything too important. But anyway, crouch under the do not cross. There's footprints everywhere. He said there was no. Fingerprints, but what about footprints? Did you count footprints? Because there's a lot of those. Like, a lot of those. Inspection store. Alright, I guess we'll start with the large footprint. Zach, these are human footprints. And they're extremely large. Couldn't be Bigfoot, could it? Did Bigfoot steal her body? I believe it. Yes, Zach, I agree. These footprints must belong to someone who's used to walking around in cold temperatures. Bigfoot! Exactly. This frost is shaped like something we're very used to seeing. That's right, a body bag. Lisa's body must have been left here. But there are no signs that the bag was dragged away. So our criminal must possess monstrous strength. Like I said, Bigfoot! 
It's the only option. It's the only uh, logical fucking answer. These pallets are a mess. Looks like this area isn't used often. Still, the idea to store a body here. It's a novel, sophisticated idea unlike anything I'd ever come up with. Sophisticated, you say? Oh, there's even, uh... You can, like, change the direction and shit. I'm trying to go back down to the... Hello? Whatever, okay. Boxes that got left behind. I can't tell what's inside. What do you think, Zach? I'm gonna go with... Okra. Yeah, okra. We're in Louisiana. If it's not okra, then what else could it possibly be? I'm sure, it must be okra. That's a staple of the South. It's the only thing. If it's not okra, then fuck it. An icicle. Never thought I'd see one of these down in the South. Wow, racist. Look at the thermometer, Zach. It's at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, or a minus 12.2 degrees Celsius. This must not be the ambiguous zero. Okay, then. We're not in the right place, then we need to leave now. Zach, can you see that? Look closely. Bigfoot's fingerprints! That's right. There are four imprints in the frost on the top of this. It's hard to believe, but I think these are fingerprints. Yes, Zach, that would lead one to believe that the body napper is a giant who's over ten feet tall. I told you it was Bigfoot. Anyway, I got $55 for inspecting everything, so good on me, I guess. Seems like our flying serpent isn't here. Is this everything, Melvin? There aren't any other rooms in this warehouse? No special rooms. Well, there is the luxury foods warehouse. Luxury foods? Why didn't you say so earlier? <sighs> Just thought you wanted to see where the body... Uh, I mean... I just thought you were only interested in warehouse number two. Besides, it's underground, so it's even colder than this. Uh, you sure you really want to go down there? You could darn well freeze to death. All life will come to an end in the icebound zone. <laughs> you feel me? Oh, I feel you. Now let me down there. Let's head there at once. I'm sure that must be where we're meant to go. But, but what about searching for Lisa's body? All we need to do is find a 10-foot tall man with monstrous strength. Yeah, dude, you don't need Bigfoots around here? That giant knows where she is. 10-foot tall? But finding the flying serpent is more important right now. Now please, guide me to the luxury foods warehouse at once. These luxury foods are most likely being used in local Cajun cuisine. I'm so excited to see what we'll find. Aren't you, Zach? Aren't you here to investigate a murder? You excited about goddamn fucking luxury foods? Anyway. Flying serpent. I wonder if it's gonna be like a logo or like an actual like a like a like a flying I don't know. A flying I don't know, yep, that's probably what it's gonna be. Flying I don't know. Alright, anyway, nothing else in the scene. Let's go find luxury foods, I guess. Off to the luxury food house. Where are you? Are you over here? You over here. Let's go get ourselves some luxury foods, eh? Where it's nice and cold. Oh, we gotta take the elevator, duh. Elevator, this is an emergency. Uh, that elevator needs a key, Mr. York. Do you have one? Actually, no. I didn't think you'd ever want to go down there. So I didn't bother to go and get one. Well, then would you go and get one now? It's like, bitch, then go get the key. What the fuck? Hold on, there's a little bug floating around in here. Just gonna clap that bug out, but flew away. Uh. Uh. Yeah, yeah. COG, I know. I'll tell it to him straight. Uh, thing is, Mr. York, you know the Clarksons? The folks who own this place? Well, they don't too much like the police. And they sure as hell don't like them when they're my color. Okay, well then I'll go down there without you. It was, uh, real hard for me to get permission to open up this place for you to search through. So they ain't gonna be too happy if I go back to them now, asking for another key. What should we do then? Let's just find a worker here who can lower the elevator for us instead. 
All they need to do is take a break from their work for a couple minutes. And what am I supposed to do? Just stand here and pretend like nothing's happening? Yeah, you FBI folks are good at that, right? That's always what I see you doing on TV. Yeah, nah, a whole lot of jack and shit, right? You're good at that. Alright, anyway, GG, we got our motherfucking <sighs> next quest to do, and now we need to get in the elevator and go down. It's okay, we need to get a key though, so we gotta find a worker who's willing to stop his very hard and excruciating work that he's doing right now to give me a fucking key. It's gotta be a specific worker we're talking about here. Oh, we can move this? Hold Zach, on. I think we can move this. Better check back here as well, just to be on the safe side. Absolutely. Just to be on the safest of sides. Dude, gameplay mechanics? Are you kidding me? We can push things? That's fucking novel. That's some gameplay right there. It's crazy. I keep meaning... I keep <laughs> pressing the wrong button to run. It's RB, not LB, damn it. Orbeez, not LBs. I got another bullfrog tongue, y'all. We're gonna amass quite the collection of bullfrog tons before this game is over, I tell you what. Alright, uh, cool. Anything else shining back here? Absolutely. Another bullfrog. Ooh, bullfrog leg, though, not his tongue. Alright, move that card. Move that card. Come on, come on, move that card. Uh huh, uh huh, move that card. Come on, come on, move that card. Uh huh, uh huh. Crazy right now, dude. Look at this. Look at this gameplay. Isn't it just riveting? It's crazy. We're gonna find some cool shit. Maybe, maybe not. Make sure I'm not like running anything over that I want to get underneath, you know? So we've come full circle. Or no, this is a different place entirely. Where the heck are we? Where the heck am I right now? I am so lost in this fucking sauce right now. What the hell is going on? Where in the hell? Okay, 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 okay. I know where I am now. Crouch under here? Uh... Oh, okay. Never mind. Sorry. I thought I was in a different spot. This is the same shit. Hold up. What's up? What's up? Uh, what can I do with this? Oh, okay. We're getting to where I need to be. I see the red hand. I see the red. And then we have a shortcut open now. So that's good. Now we can get back out. We don't have to go back through all that bullshit. I like that. Alright, any other random shit laying around here? Let's see. Gotta gotta go underneath here. Is there something fancy back here? Indeed, a crawfish. Dude, we're collecting so many creature appendages, tails and fra and legs and tongues. Oh my. Hello, hello. Zach, the human ability to adapt is a frightening thing. Some humans have the power to sleep anywhere as long as they set their minds to it. Well, Alright, uh, I guess if he's sleeping we can just steal the key from his ass, is that the idea? I'll be taking that, you sleepy fuck. Now we should be able to operate the elevator. No need to worry. This facility no longer has a body to steal. What else do they have to lose? A few cans of crawfish? I feel bad for him, but it's for the sake of the investigation. I'll write him a letter of apology later. Few cans of crawfish. Do crawfish come? Chat! 
Do crawfish come in a can where you live? I've never even heard of canned crawfish, but you know what? I wouldn't put it past it. Unless you could just get it like... Um, I don't even know, man. Anyway, we got the key, so that's cool. Mr. York, did you find a key? Ha! Now that's my special agent. There ain't no stopping you. Hell no. Nah. Wanna head straight down? You bet. Let's sally forth, Melvin. Melvin. Zach, look at that thermometer. Zero degrees Fahrenheit. Or minus 17.7 7 degrees Celsius. We're at the zero, baby. This is the ambiguous zero. Ooh. Here we go. We found hey, the zero. Avery. Who's Avery? This guy? Open the damn door, Avery! Oh, it ain't no use, Mr. York. Once Avery starts working on something, that's all he sees. He just tunes out everything else. We'll have to wait until he finishes and comes out to us, I reckon. Or we could come back tomorrow. I disagree, Melvin. Time may be on our side, but that doesn't mean we should waste it. You gave me Mr. Alligator precisely for moments like these, <laughs> didn't you? I'll just shoot him in the head. Wait, Mr. York! Those tranquilizers may be non-lethal, but it's still dangerous to use them on humans. Of course, Melvin. I never said I was going to shoot him. I'm going to shoot stuff to make it fall on him. You're going to shoot some meat to get his attention. <laughs> shoot some meat. I'm right, ain't I? Maybe. Spoilers, child. God. Anyway, we're going to shoot down some meat. All right. Sounds like a fucking plan. Who's ready to shoot some meat? Make sure you shoot your meat, everyone. Hold on, though. I got to pick up this crawfish tail. It's important. Important. All right. Who's ready to shoot some meat? That gets your attention now, bitch. You shot my gator. What are you doing? This is Mr. York, an agent from the FBI. Is he 10 feet tall? Holy shit, he's a big boy. Hi, Avery. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. York, uh, you a smarty pants, hmm? Avery Smith. He's a big boy. Could could be important. <laughs> He's shyer than he looks. Uh, come on, just settle down, Avery. Tell him what this here place is for. <laughs> the Lots alligator head is put back there, floating food around here. Yep. Mighty precious to the Clarksons, so I gotta guard it. I see. So you're this area's keeper. Oh, I help with the research, too. I do like research. Mm -hmm. Research? What are you talking about, Avery? This doesn't look like a lab to me. Oh, ain't no lab. It's a warehouse. Ain't no lab. Uh, smarty pant scientist does the research. <laughs> I ain't no smarty pants, no. He's a bit slow in the mind, but he ain't a bad guy. <gasps> oh. Your story about the giant who carried Lisa out. Don't tell me you think it's him. I mean, it's true that he's free to come and go as he pleases in this warehouse, but... No, as far as I can tell, he's just a bit over 6'5". The one who moved Lisa's body must be at least 10 feet tall. He's clearly too short. <sighs> too short, huh? Yeah, my favorite rapper. What's well, if you ever happen to word? find a man who makes Beach? him look small, I'd sure like to meet him.
Please. What? Hey, cut it out. Please. Why? The fuck? Avery, that's not Lise. Not Lise? This is Melvin's daughter. And my precious assistant. Unfortunately, Elise is no longer with us. Elise! Elise! My fault! My fault! He, uh, I guess he's sort of like Lise, you know? Sort of? The poor fella's got himself a child like mine. You know how normal kids tease other kids in order to get attention? Well, with this big lug, sometimes folks who don't know him too well see something and end up calling the police. But I know that deep down, he's got a good heart. Hey, Mr. York, I'll keep him busy, but I'd appreciate it if you'd hurry this particular inspection along. Just holler at me if you find anything. I reckon that'll make it easier for you to go do your thing, yeah? Melvin, I think you're finally starting to catch on. Yeah, you're my distraction while I investigate this place. Anyway, dude, we're at Questo completing this game like it's crazy. Anyway, we gotta find this flying serpent. That's what we're here for. Now, I'm assuming flying serpent does not just mean there's some alligators on the wall, right? Maybe? Hung alligators. I suppose in a way they sort of look like flying serpents. Exactly. Oh, but that's pushing it. Remember, we're in a dark basement here. They'll never reach the sky. Damn. Get wrecked, alligators. You'll never reach the sky. You hear that? No matter how hard you try, you'll never reach the sky. That's a fucking lyric right there. No matter how hard you try, you'll never reach the sky. Sit down, bitch, because you're never going to be that guy. I don't know. Frozen oysters. Personally, I'd rather have a cocktail filled with fresh ones. We hunt for oysters more materials suck. than we can eat and freeze them over long periods of time. The human race gives terror a whole new meaning. Oysters suck. I'm not a big fan of oysters. They're kind of gross. It's like eating a, it's like sipping a booger. It's like, ugh, gross. Ugh. Cans of Holy Trinity paste. Holy Trinity paste? What? Onions, bell peppers, and celery. Oh. The absolute basics for any Cajun dish. Got it. I've never heard it called that, but sure. This product combines them all into some sort of paste. Oof. People actually buy this garbage? Even the name sounds idiotic. Zach, I just made an eternal promise with myself. If I ever happen to come across any food prepared with this paste, I vow to never call it Cajun food. Damn, get wrecked. Get wrecked, Holy Trinity paste. We'll just call it the Holy Trinity f the foods, I guess. Anyway, what, the, what do we got here? There are torn off claws and legs scattered all over the ground. I doubt they'll fly anytime soon. I can't tell which ones are from crawfish and which parts are from shrimp. How about you, Zach? How about you, Zach? Can you tell? How about you kids at home? Can you tell which parts are shrimp and which are crawdad pieces and shrimp? Or whatever? <gasps> Avery, this Flying box looks serpent. Special. It's a dragonfly. Clocks and food. Mm. For their home. Melvin, is this the Clarkson's family crest? <laughs> oh, the dragonfly? Yeah, that's the Clarkson's mark, all right. Well, there you go. Flying serpent. The dragonfly. Got it. Ain't no big deal, though. You can find those all over town. Oh, yeah? Is that so? Well, yeah. They pretty much run all of this town's major industries. Yeah. I do believe they own just about everything there is to own. So their word is law. They got the whole darn town tattooed with their dragonflies. I can't even walk a few steps without seeing one. And yet that's the first one I've seen. Zack, this dragonfly is our flying serpent. The flying serpent owns this town. They're related to Lise Clarkson, our victim, and Pungan's oracle pointed us toward their family crest. The Clarksons must be deeply intertwined with this case. Melvin, Patricia, I think I've had enough of this frozen world. Let's head back out to that merciless sun. Okay. We're done here, just like that, huh? Well, 
What are you waiting for? I can't bear to spend another second down here. Oh, okay. Fuck this place, I guess. Bye.